Good morning. Um, my name is Paul. I'm here to do the reading this morning. You'll find the reading in your bulletin if you received it. In today's reading, there are two, uh, two sections we're going to go through. Uh, the first one is Judges, um, chapter 6, verses 11 through 18. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Ophrah that belonged to Joash the Abazite, um, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a winepress to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where, is, where are all of his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and has given us to the hand of Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in, in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. I am, not, am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and I will strike down the Midianites, leaving none alive. Gideon replied, If now I have found favor in your eyes, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. Please do not go away until I come back and bring my offering and set it before you. And the Lord said, I will wait until you return. And the second reading is in Acts 17, 10 through 12. As soon as it was night, the believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. On arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were, were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness and examined the scriptures every day to see if Paul said was true. As a result, many of them believed, and also a number of prominent Greek women and many Greek men. This is the word of the Lord. So I want to just introduce uh, Jim to come up. Uh, Jim is, uh, once again, the pastor of The Gathering Place. It's, he's planting a, a church up north, and he uh, has blessed us to be here. Um, while he heads up there, I'll tell you kind of why I asked him. Uh, my, my brother's 50th birthday party was last night in Orlando, and I actually was there this morning and drove here before church started. So I thought, boy, it'd be nice if I didn't have to preach that Sunday. So uh, Jim uh, was blessed, uh, was blessed enough to um, uh, share the word with us this morning. So thank you, Jim. Father, it's an honor for us to be here. There's so many places we could be today, but you have called us by grace, and you have saved us, and you're our Lord and our Savior. So there's no other place we'd rather be than here. Lord, I pray that each person who is here will be strengthened this morning through not only the worship, but now through the Word. That we'll live by faith as those who have gone before us. That we'll trust your Word. And that this calling that's been put upon our lives as we belong to you is one that will be lived out in our homes, in our communities. Thank you, Jesus for gathering us together today. In your name we pray, Jesus' name, amen. amen. Well, it's, uh, it's amazing to be standing here with you. Uh, I've got a lot of emotions that are running through me this morning uh, because of the honor and the privilege to be with all of you. Uh, Pastor Vince and I go back about five years. I used to serve a Lutheran church in Lake Worth. And I started a recovery program there at that church, and that's where I met a gentleman named Shane uh, Curran, who was teaching your Bible class just a little bit ago. And from there, an incredible journey began. Ultimately, I ended up receiving a call to plant a congregation up in the Port St. Lucie area, and we call it the Gathering Place. And you might go, well, what, what does that have to do with Christ. It has everything to do with Christ. Because first and foremost, when you look at the book of Acts, after the multitude was baptized, what did they begin to do? In Acts 2.42, it says that they began to gather and they began to devote themselves to the Word of God. They began to break bread together. They began to pray together and began to fellowship with one another. That's the church. 
The church is those who confess and believe in God and trust that he died for them and rose again for them. They've made him Lord. And so then we gather together just like you're doing today. And so that's the plant that we have begun up in Port St. Lucie. But there's another thing that's awesome about today is that you have all these brothers and sisters from different walks of life who've come together to, to grow, to be disciples of Jesus Christ. And it's awesome. This is what makes God smile. So be excited about your faith today as you're growing. The second thing that hit me as I was getting ready to come up here, and I'm looking at all of you who are here, and as we're going to look a little bit more at Gideon, I hope all of you know that none of you in this room is an accident. One of the things that drives me crazy, and it's the blessing of having a Christian school here, is in the schools now you're taught you're an accident because the schools teach evolution, that we evolved, that we're accidents waiting to die. And when you see the mass chaos that's going on in this country and throughout the world, there's a reason. Because when we're apart from God, it's chaos. I'm born sinful, separated from God, living apart from him, doing my will and not God's will. So I want you to all hear that nobody in this room is an accident, that you've been created for a reason, to be in a relationship with your Father, and to know deeply how much Jesus loves you. That's where it all starts. And when we're looking at Gideon today, we're remembering a man that was called out to bring the people back to faith. And so I want to take a look at that with all of you as God guides you and leads you. So I want to read from the book of Judges, just a second, a couple of things. So God called out Gideon. And he called him to deliver the people out of the hands of the Midianites. And he lived by faith. He trusted. He had no other choice but to trust. And I want to specifically go to the end of Judges chapter 6, 7, and 8. I'm going now to Gideon, or I mean to Judges chapter 7 and now Judges 8. After he delivered them, here's something I want you to hear. I'm looking at Judges 8, 22. The men of Israel said to Gideon, rule over us. You and your son and your grandson, also for you who have saved us from the hand of Midian. Gideon said to them, I will not rule over you. Then he says, and my son will not rule over you. The Lord will rule over you. That's the key. We're blessed to live in this nation. I was just in Guatemala a few weeks ago and had an opportunity to serve there and share Jesus. And, and all of the brokenness of that culture, if they do not receive Jesus, they're receiving nothing. Because that's what life is all about. It's about Jesus being our king. So they've been delivered out of the hands of the Midianites. Now they're saying, we're going to go to God. But then this happens at the end of Judges 8. As soon as Gideon died, the people of Israel turned again and whored after the Baals and made Baal breath their God. And the people of Israel did not remember the Lord their God who had delivered them from the hand of their enemies on every side. And they did not show steadfast love to the family of Jeroboam, that is Gideon, in return for all the good that he had done to Israel. You see, it's all about Christ. The chaos comes when we're not all about Christ. I'm so thankful that you're supporting first responders because I work with first responders. I'm a chaplain with the Palm Beach Sheriff's Office. I'm also a chaplain with 
fire rescue for Palm Beach, and then I'm also a first responder for major crises of Palm Beach County. Thursday, I got a call out because a 93-year-old woman drove her car into a pond, and the first responders had to go out and try to save her. And when they got there, she was in the middle of that pond, the car was floating, but they weren't able to save her in time. So you know what? What matters most for that beautiful woman and the men I had a chance to talk with is God. You know, I don't know when my last day is, you don't know when your last day is, but between now and then, it's to be about God. Amen? So here's another important thing. Gideon lived by faith. Hebrews 11 talks all about faith. It talks all about living by faith, and we're going to get into Hebrews 12 as well. And that's the truth. It's all about faith. But when I was teaching years ago, after God had uh, changed my life, I decided that the most important thing in the world was what I just said, that people needed to know about God, the true God, not just a God of our understanding, but the God of the universe. And it hit me so profoundly that that was the most important thing in the world. But you know where it started? It started because of this, the Bible. Uh, you heard at the beginning of the service where Pastor Vince said, do, we, do you believe in this word of God as being the truth, the sole truth and authority? And they said, yes, we do believe that. Because it starts here. When I was in college, I had grown up in the church. I had believed in Jesus, but I didn't read the Bible. And by the grace of God, I had a wonderful roommate. He and I are still in touch today. And when he would go to bed, he'd read the Bible. And one night he looked at me and he goes, Jim, you tell me you love Jesus. You tell me that he's important in your life, but I've never once seen you read the Bible. Why? And I'm like, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just don't read the Bible. And he goes, well, why don't you do that? And you want to know what happened, which is so amazing. When, when I opened up this Bible, and I don't even remember where it was. It was somewhere in the New Testament. And I started reading it. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is the answer. This is the answer to life. Everything that I'm reading here, if, if, if we just did this, if we just followed this, it would, it would, everything would change. And when I did my childhood friend's wedding yesterday, I was blessed to do my childhood friend's wedding. We've been friends for 40 years. And at that wedding, my friend who has fallen away, but is just barely starting to come back, I got to read this to him and tell him, the most important thing in your marriage is your relationship with Jesus Christ. You are called to love your wife to Jesus, and she is called to love you to Jesus. Thank God. And what an honor. Because I started reading this and studying this and realizing that much as we're reading about Gideon and the people falling away, the most important thing in the whole world is having someone know who God is. Now, I'm sharing all of this with you. The book of Acts you were given as well. So you can go in your, in your bulletin or you can um, go in your Bible. By the way, how many of you brought Bibles today? That's not bad. It's usually worse than that. Okay, so I'm glad you've got Bibles. So, um, because here's the key yes, I'm a pastor and I've studied the Bible and I've gone off to seminary and learned it a lot. But what if I'm coming up here and I'm telling you things that aren't true? How will you know? 
You're trusting me to guide you and lead you as you are your other pastors who are here. We need to be grounded in this. So you're not just taking my opinion, but you're following what this says. So look what they did in Acts 17. You heard it. Acts 17, 10 through 12. As soon as it was night, believers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea, and on arriving there, they went to the Jewish synagogue. Now the Berean Jews were of more noble character than those in Thessalonica, for they received the message with great eagerness. I don't know about you, but I, I hope you are eager to be here today. Amen. I heard another, yes, sir. That's awesome. Speak it. So eager. Yeah. I mean, this is the best place in the world to be. There's no better place than being in the presence of God and singing hallelujahs and saying, Jesus is my Lord and my Savior. So with eagerness, what did they do then? They examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. Every day. And so I go back to my life. The more I spend time with Jesus in prayer and in the Word every day, the more it changes my life. I count it an honor, and, and those who know me say, you know, every day is an opportunity to love someone to Jesus. That's a gift. Praise God. And, you know, you don't convert people. God's the one that's brought all of us into this relationship by grace. But he does tell us that we are now to go, and we're called to share. We're called to baptize. You know, that baptism or baptisms that are going to happen, I think it would be awesome if all of you, rather than rushing off somewhere else, would come and be a part of that baptism. Because, you know, when I was in Jamaica, um, whenever we would baptize families, we would go down to the river, and the whole congregation would come to the river, and they'd stand on the side of the riverbanks, and they'd be singing hymns and songs, and they'd be praising the Lord because it was a baptism. So how about taking that as a priority and going, man, we have another child of God that's coming into his kingdom, and you all get together and you rejoice in that because that's the Great Commission. Go, make, and baptize, and teach them all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I'm with you always until the end of the age. So, again, just going back to this point, Gideon delivers, but God's people fall away again and go away from him. You know, in Deuteronomy, it says that we are to teach these things, not just here, but we are to teach these things to our children and our children's children. Night and day, it says in Deuteronomy, that we are to lay this foundation for the nations to come. And so that's the blessing of all of you who are here today is that you're growing as disciples and now that foundation has been laid. And now keep growing as disciples and then getting out into your community and sharing Jesus with your community. But you've got to know this. You've got to study the Bible. You've got to see if these things are true, the things that I'm sharing with you. Now, I want to close with this. In the book of Hebrews, you read about all of the people who have had faith. And then in Hebrews 12, it goes on to say some really important words that I want you to hear as well today. So Hebrews 12, at the end of all these people who live by faith, the writer now speaks to you and to me. Since we're surrounded, this is Hebrews 12, verse 1, since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses of all those who have lived by faith, the Gideons and Abraham and on down the line, Let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I, I need to know what that sin is. The Bible talks about what those sins are. 
The Bible tells us, right, that we're a new creation, that the old is gone and the new has come. You no longer live as you once lived. You now live this way. So all these who live by faith before you are cheering you on. They're excited. They're saying, go, be faithful, live your life for Christ, make a difference in this community. And let, get that sin out of your life and cling more and more to Jesus. And then, let you, may you run with endurance the race that is set before you. May you look to Jesus, the one who is the founder and perfecter of your faith, the one who brought you into this relationship by grace, the Holy Spirit bringing you to faith that Jesus died on a cross for you and he forgave you and he's given you eternal life and that's sealed for you. And verse 4, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. You, you see, the more I realize how much Jesus loves me, and the more you realize how much Jesus loves you, that, that changes everything. He, he loved you and me so much that he went to that cross and suffered, and he had never committed a sin. And he went to that cross to make me righteous and forgiven. He loves me that much and you that much. And the more I gather that and the more it gets into my heart, into my soul, I'm just like, Lord, yes, help me by the power of the Spirit and dwelt in me to love my neighbor and to love this family that God has placed around me. And then, in realizing all that he's done, verse 3 Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. And some of you who know me well know there's days where I wake up and I'm like, Lord, it's just, I see so much pain. I've seen so much suffering. I've seen so much evil. And it overwhelms me sometimes. But then I go back to the word and the word reminds me that there's this great cloud of witnesses and most of all, my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ who's saying, don't be weary in my struggle against sin. So that's what I want you to hear today. The key for Gideon was living by faith. And he's no different than any one of us in this room. We live now by faith. And because you've been saved and you know how much Jesus loves you, don't just come to church on a Sunday. I see that so often. People just come to church and then they go home and that's it. But then they're not living their life for Christ. It's one thing to know him. It's another thing to have him be your Lord. When he becomes your Lord, then you consult him on everything you do. And you say, not my will, but your will be done. So when he's your Lord and your Savior, that's when you live and you use the gifts that you have. And each one of you have amazing gifts that God has uniquely given you. And he wants you to use those gifts to share Jesus in this community, to be families that are founded on Christ and Christ alone, so that this community might indeed have a brand new revelation of what life is all about. Because you know and you see it, and many of you have seen, I live this way. I turn to this drug, I turn to this, to this car, to all these different things, but the only thing that matters in life is Jesus. Can I hear an amen? Amen. amen. Let's pray. Lord, I just am so humbled shared at the earlier service that my friend Brian and I, when we were growing up, it was pretty broken area, broken lives, and we turned to all kinds of things that weren't of you. And yet, by the grace of God, you called me out, and you've called all of us out, and you brought us back to our perfect Heavenly Father, and we thank you. May this day not just be any day, but may this be truly a day where we're growing, 
and we're truly giving our lives to you. And Lord, maybe you've got more baptisms planned after this service because there might be some people here who, who don't really know you, who haven't given their lives to you. You know them and you've called them by name and they are yours. Be with us the rest of this day. Be with this beautiful church family that is one in Christ, in Christ alone. And we just pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to pray the Lord's Prayer. And what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to stand and I'd like you to hold the hand of someone next to you. Remember, we're family. I think we need to remember that. We're family. We're one, right? And this is the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray as one. So let's pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer when they said, how should we pray? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All right. Now we got some more awesome things that are happening. This is just a great morning because I hear an hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's great. So Pastor Casey is coming up uh, to share a testimony, uh, do a Q&A. So let's welcome up uh, Casey up to his ear. There he is. Hey, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being a part of uh, just this beautiful expression of God's kingdom and what he's doing here. It is a real uh, special moment, uh, I believe, in what God is, is doing and continuing to do uh, here in this city. And so we're incredibly thankful for that. Jim, thank you so much for the word. And uh, we're excited to uh, be able to invite up uh, two people that you're going to both meet. And you're also going to hear a little bit about um, how uh, some of these things have been working out in their life. And so uh, I'm going to ask John and uh, Allie Hicks if you guys would come on up. Can we give them a round of applause? As they make their way up, um, uh, what I wanted to do is I just wanted to have a moment of prayer. Uh, I, I, think, I think we missed a moment last week. Uh, some of, some of the, the things were unfolding sort of right before uh, our church uh, we, we gathered, but there were two shootings last week, uh, and at least that we know of. Uh, and if we, if we were to go even world, worldwide, I'm sure there was more just brokenness and, and evil. Uh, that was in our presence. And so it's the church's responsibility to address those things and bring them before the throne of Jesus. And so I want to do that now, uh, and then, and then we'll, we'll continue on in our, in our time together. So Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and uh, I want to pray that you would do what you do best. Father, you bring life out of death, and you make much of the name of Jesus. And so, God, I pray that where there has been death, where there has been evil and sin and um, racism and, and, and all of the trappings that go along with this world, God, I pray that you would mysteriously and lovingly bring life where there has been death. God, would you comfort, would you heal, and would you use your church, the bride, to be the first and last on the scene? bringing your good news in the midst of this darkness. We lift those families to you. We lift those cities to you. God, we pray that your kingdom would come. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So, hello. Good morning, guys. Um, we, we want to welcome in our midst, uh, some of you may know uh, John and, and Allison Hicks, and some of you might not. Um, we have uh, asked uh, John Hicks to come on uh, staff at the Avenue Church as our discipleship pastor, and so we are excited about that. Everybody wants to clap. <laughs> And Allie Hicks, it's kind of like a welcome back. 
We, Thank you. Yeah, we had like a long pause. Um, Allie served as our women's uh, leader and director uh, for several years, and then uh, she met John, and, and we let John borrow her for a little bit, and now he's done the good thing, bringing her back. Um, no, we're, we're e extremely excited to be able to have you guys, and um, John, we're, we're really excited to see how the Lord's going to use you as you um, become... Uh, just a pastor to leaders, build a leadership community, uh, just provide incredible follow-up and, and oversight and support to what God's doing here. And so, um, so listen, we're, we're talking about Gideon today, and we're talking about, um, you know, uh, living by faith. And one of the cool things about Gideon was that it seemed like the Spirit of the Lord allowed him to do more with less. If you know the story of Gideon, his, the, the army kind of shrinks. God shrinks the army, and then all of a sudden he goes out and defeats the enemy with less. And so, so thinking of the, of the theme, God doing more with less, and learning to walk by faith in that, um, John, why don't you kick us off, and then, and then Ali, wh whatever, however you want to like, think through that as well. How have you guys been walking through that, uh, specifically as we think about kind of this, this recent season of your life? All right, good morning. Good to see everyone. Um, my, my first thought to that, I, I'm gifted uh, with sarcasm. Any sarcastic <laughs> people? No one? Spiritual gift. Spiritual, <laughs> spiritual gift. So I was going to make some wisecrack about the staff of the Ave and how much God has done with less. <laughs> right? Isn't that, isn't that great? Well done. <laughs> well, well done. <laughs> He's gonna, you guys know great. better. You, you guys know better. Uh, I, I really identify with Gideon. Um, I encourage you to read the story. Be like the Bereans, as we heard today. Go read Judges 6, 7, and 8 in there. Just a great story. Gideon, um, man, he, he, let me just read one or two verses, and then I'll, I'll share my thoughts here. You know, God comes to him and says, I want you to deliver my people from the Midianites. He says, uh, pardon me, Lord. Don't you like that? Pardon me, Lord. Excuse me. But how can I save Israel? My clan, my, my people, we are the weakest in Manasseh, which was one of the tribes, and I, Gideon, am the least in my family. Anyone feel like that? It's like it's just like Moses. You know, was it last week, the week before? What do, what do I have to offer you? Gideon was the same way. I, I've got the least to offer, and we see that in Gideon's life. He he's out. You know, his first assignment from the Lord. You can read about it. He he uh, tears down an altar of Baal and tears down an Asherah, Asherah pole. Those are you know cultic, false religious things. And and he builds. He sacrifices to the Lord. You know when he does it? He does it at night because he was afraid of what others would think. Anyone identify with that? That's me. I have a gift and a curse. My, my gift is, is a lack of self-confidence, and, and because of that, I'm really cautious. Um, so that's, that's kind of a curse, but it's also a gift in that. I'm like, all right, Lord, you want me to do something? Um, you've got to prove it to me. And then I'm all in. And that's what he did with, with Gideon. And again, read the story. So much good stuff um, in there. And that's kind of where we are at this, this place in, in uh, our life. Um, I had been pastoring in Michigan for almost 18 years. Um, things were going well. Um, I become, you know, I guess comfortable in your lane. You do a job that long, you like, you know what you're doing. You've got your weekly schedule set. Um, we were well cared for. We, we just, we had all the, all the supports around us that we needed. And I got married, had three kids, you know, every, everything was going great. And then God said, guess what, John? I want you to move. I'm like, what? Are you sure? Pardon me, Lord. And over time, he confirmed. And he kept stirring that up in both of our hearts. And, and over time, he confirmed that, that he was indeed calling us to the, to the Av. And, and as far as the, the idea of doing less with, with more, um, you know, we, we are back in Allie's comfort zone. You, you guys are family, right? Um, we are way outside of my comfort zone. <laughs> I mean, like, 
outside. You know, different different uh, job description, um, different. Uh, even though we're non-denominational now, they have different denomination. I'm, I'm Southern Baptist in roots. Any Southern Baptists here? Yeah, okay. Yeah, we got a few, and kind of weird hanging out with Lutherans and and former Presbyterians, and and no telling what else is going on in this room. You know, so so way way outside of you know my my comfort zone. And, and so God's saying, you know what? Just like you did Gideon, you have to rely on me again more like you did when you first started in ministry. And that's what happens often. You get comfortable. You, you develop your habits, your routines, and you're like, okay, I, I've got this, God. I, I can go through my days and my weeks without your supernatural enabling and guidance in my life. And so now it's, it's back to, you know, all right, Lord, I need you to help me walk, and I, I need to seek your direction more, more intently and rely on your, your strength and, and, and wisdom. So that, that's a big part of, of what doing more with, with less is uh, for me in this season of life. Thank you. Thank you. I got one. Thank you. She's got one, uh, buddy. Yeah. We, we might throw up, too. <laughs> but thanks for sharing. <laughs> um, it is sweet to be back uh, with the Av fam and uh, Trinity Lutheran, new fam, get to meet you guys. And um, we're really grateful for God's calling in this next season. Um, the theme of relying on God um, as he was preaching and just praying, um, you know, these past, I don't know, we'll sum it up, almost four years have been nonstop tr transitions. And uh, what the Lord's really taught me is that life is one big transition. Like you are either in a celebration, like a, life, a season of celebration or suffering or the tension of both. Um, and so we um, have been through so many tr quick transitions uh, over these past couple of years. And so I am moody. I, let's just call it, we'll call it that. I, I am emotional. I am the Psalms. I, he can vouch. I mean, those that know you, know me, know. Um, I, that is uh, how God created me, but also who I am. And um, mixed in flesh and sin in there. And so with that, the Lord has reminded me that he is constant and that he is not moody. His feelings for us are fixed. And so there is, he is trustworthy in that. He is faithful in that. And so no matter what season we are in or you are in, um, that we can look to him and he can do more with less. He can do more with less. That's actually um, all throughout scripture and all throughout our lives. And for those of you that know Jesus, you um, have experienced that and are experiencing it in the mist. And for those of you that don't know Jesus yet, you can. Like he is, you are here and he is pursuing you for that reason, that purpose, so that he can um, have this exciting uh, life with you um, and live it to the full of that, to do more with less. And so uh, that's, I could go on, but I'll stop there. <laughs> hey, so listen, I, I, love, I love what you guys had to share. Um, and uh, just a, a brief background, um, Allie, not too, too long ago was single. And we've walked, we've walked several years with Allie. She was single, and uh, she struggled with cancer. And she was told that uh, she would uh, not have babies, correct? And um, well, the cool thing, if you read the, like, like John has been saying, if you read the, the narrative of Gideon, Gideon's armies encamped on the other side. And then like the next verse is, but the spirit of the Lord. And um, what's cool about you guys is, is you are living testimony of but the spirit of the Lord, because you have three beautiful babies, a wonderful marriage, and now you're a part of this family. We love you. Can we give them a hand, we please? So I'm going to invite the worship team to come back up as, as we prepare to close, and um, we're just going to open this moment up now, uh, and, and I would invite uh, you to, if, if you would uh, be willing to receive a few people for prayer, uh, I'm, I'm going to invite the prayer team to come on up, and, uh, and we just gather, and uh, this is a moment for you to come. There'll be a song uh, behind us, so some of you may want to sing that song in response. Uh, some of you might want to come forward for prayer because you connected to something uh, Pastor Jim was, was sharing in the message, or you connected to something... Uh, 
uh, from, from Pastor John or Allie. Uh, and, and we would love to be able to have the opportunity to pray for you and to pray with you. We are believing that something really special happens when, uh, when you pray, and especially when you gather and pray. And you allow somebody to pray for you. Uh, there's, it's just a beautiful moment uh, where, where God works in, in really special and, and lovely ways. And so we want to invite that to happen. Uh, we also have our offering table there where some, where some of you may want to respond by giving. There's Avenue Church and, and Trinity offering. You'll, you'll be able to see that back there. Also connection cards um, uh, where you can respond in giving and, and uh, your attendance if you're part of the, the Trinity family. And so uh, we're going to invite the Spirit to come. And we're going to believe but the Spirit uh, for this moment even right now. And so uh, respond how you, how you feel the Spirit leads. Father, we do invite your Spirit and we commit this moment unto you in Christ's name. Amen.